right, folks, welcome to the show. Hey, listen, we're going to get right at it. Look, I've got some faxes here. I've got questions asked me all the time. For instance, Bill from PEI. He says in the original six, they hit harder back then. Bill, Bill boy, I hate to tell you, back then they hit the hurt. Now they hit to put you out of the game. Watch this. Hey, kids, don't get caught with your head down or you'll pay the price. Just watch. These guys thread the needle, starting with Paul Correa. Emo's not gonna put them all in. Greer to Morrow and in. Shanahan to Iserman to McCarty and in. EVY tips it home. Joe Newendike, hey, hey, looks like Wayne here. Nice pass to Simon in. Linden to Rakowski. Hey, watch Patagia take the man like he should have. He passes to Campina. To Francis, and in. Tic tac toe to Nolan. Here's a nice give and go by Sakic. Alfie sees Blake sneaking in, gives it to him, and in. Wait feeds Garen. Watch Mike Badano bang away and knock this one past Patrick. Sake to Borg. Up court. Watch this little backhand move, and Sakura puts it in. Carmino, nice soft pass to Kirk Muller, and tips it in. Alexan to Carter. All right, this is from Winnipeg, Manitoba, one of my favorite cities. It's Kirk. And he says, look, I'm a goaltender, I have friends who are goaltenders, and what they do is, they put on that segment, you know, of the goaltenders making saves so they get up for the game. All right, Kurt, we're going to make a nice long one for you, and for all you goaltenders, just before you go to the game, cue it up and get on there and keep kicking them out.
a nice save by Sean Hill. Just imagine if these guys didn't have the mask. You have to wonder how the old goalie survived. Sure makes you wonder. Hey folks, I've never seen anything like this in my life before. Look at this shot. Hits the stick, goes right up and hits the mask. Can you imagine if he didn't have this mask on? And like I said, how the old guys get away with it. I don't know. It's still alive. Look where it goes. Anyhow, they couldn't bend the, couldn't bend the wire back up. So they went and got the Philly Phantom, that's where he played before, Wire Mask, went out and he played great. These goaltenders are a different breed of cat. Hey folks, I'll tell you, every goalie will tell you the biggest friend he's got on the ice is the post. Just watch these and listen to them. from Calgary. He said, Don, I love you. Hey, I love you on Hockey Night in Canada. And I say, who doesn't? Anyhow, he wants to know the funniest things I've seen in hockey. Well, I'll tell you a few I can tell. Now, I remember one time it was in Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh uh, Duke King Gardens. I think Howie Meeker was coaching. And we were losing. We had our goalie out, right? And they had a pretty good club. And, I, and a guy named Jerry, and I'm not going to say his last name. He's living in Sudbury right now. He gets a puck and he gets a breakaway. He's home free. All he has to do is go that. But no, Jerry's going to make the big wind-up, eh? And he's going to blast it. So I can still see him going down the left side. He winds up. Just as he goes to shoot, he hits a rut. And he goes head first into the boards, and the puck goes by. It's the first time I've ever seen both clubs. Now, the puck is lying there. Somebody can pick it up, put it in the net. Both clubs were on their hands and knees lying. They were laughing their heads off. Now, I know the hockey players are strange back in those days, I guess. Guy could have had a broken neck. Anyhow, they get them on the stand. This is a true story. They get them on the stretcher, and they're lifting them up. The stretcher breaks and it pulls out six vertebrae of the guy. So all for him not going like that, here all these things happen. He ended up, he had a cracked vertebrae, I think, and the other guy was out six months. Anyhow, you had to be there to see that one. That's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Both teams killing themselves with a puck line in front of the net. Folks, I don't know what's going on, but I've never in my life saw so much glass broken as this year. Watch these here. Used to be one or two pieces, but look at it go here. Hey, I'll tell you something. I don't mind when the glass shatters, but I don't like it when it pops out, because that's big, heavy stuff. Yeah, take a look at this one. A skate hardly touches it.
on, folks, you're gonna see what the camera sees. Hey, when you're on the ice, you gotta look out for your buddies. Hey, checking his teeth. Yes, yeah, Scott, check them good. They're all there. I'll tell you something, folks. I don't like that camera in the penalty box. It makes the guys look like dummy. They're sitting there. Hey, here's the two dummies that got the penalty. Evidently, these guys don't like it either. Hey, I don't want to say that Theo Fleury had a tough year last year. He couldn't even put a sweater straight. See if you can see what happens here. Hey, this is a funny one. Gar Snow makes the save, and two pucks all of a sudden appear. One must have been stuck in his pads, and then it fell out. Never seen that before either. Hey, sometimes you're on the good side of the highlight reel, and sometimes you're on the bad side, right, Sergi? Andy the Eagle says, of all the guys you have to give it to, Stevie Wonder Iserman. More hits, you better keep your head up, remember. There's a great hit by Ty. Yeah, like he said, hey, Traverse, how did you like that hit? Keep a good man down, eh, Darcy? All right, now here's a good one. Jason from Mississauga. He says, Grapes, I see you around all the rinks, minor hockey here, and the practices and that. He says, what bugs you the most when you go to these practices and games? Well, I'm going to tell you my pet peeve. It's the coaches saying, pass the puck, pass the puck. And I hear the parents yelling, pass the puck. Don't be a puck hog. Let me tell you something. Everybody that shoots the puck Scores goals. It's only natural. Pavel Burry, he's had the most shots in the league last year, and he scored the most goals. How about Brad Hall? Patrick Waugh must have been dreaming about him. Shoot the puck, kids. That's how you score. When Brett was a little boy, his daddy taught him to shoot the puck, and boy, did Brett listen to his daddy. Watch these rockets.
Can't score them all, not on a great goalie like Patrick. Now watch some of these cannons. And it puts one right through the net. Here's the king of the slap shot, Al McKinnis. Look, Al shoots so hard he put the puck right through the boards during the warm up. Kirk says, What the heck is Al shooting him that hard to warm up, anyhow? Hey, watch these beauties say. Nobody likes tougher hockey than me, but I sure hate to see the goalies run like this. It's not right. Yeah, the Dominator had a tough playoff versus Philly. They knew how to ring his bell. The Dominator says, that's it, I've had enough. Hey, Shields didn't have a walk in the park last year either. He's had enough too. I know how to stop the goalies from being run without adding one new rule. The solution, put the pipes back in and watch the players start to avoid cutting to the net, I'll tell you. And another thing I hate, guys going in and spraying the goaltenders. What kind of stuff is that? No respect. Big goalies are tough guys, and sometimes they fight back. Hey, life is a ref for Heisman. It's not an easy one. What's that penalty for? Getting in the way, ref? And there's Carey, six stitches in the noggin, and not a hair out of place. Finley has McKinley all lined up, right? No way. And worst of all, look what happens.
And not only the poor refs and lines, but have to look out for the players. They have to put up with the coaches, too. Watch. I have no idea what Bob is saying here. Joel's giving him an earful, though. Scotty's saying, rabbit ears, rabbit ears, rabbit ears. Hey, Robbie Fatorik has a nice toss here. I didn't think he was that strong. And here's what I used to do, too. Take and throw the gum. Watch Pat. And Pat's calling somebody yappy, yappy. And here's that great coach for the Montreal Canadiens, Alain Vigneault. Kevin Lowe says, enough of this coaching stuff. I'm getting out of here and I'm going to be a GM next year. Ron Wilson asks Matthew Barnaby, is your arm sore? Is your arm sore? Ooh. Not only do the refs get it from the coaches, but they get it from the goalies too. Hey, watch Dominic. He, he always seems to be upset. He says, give me another one. CBU Cujo is a little upset here. He said he was interrupted. He wants a little chat with Mick Magoo. Hey, I gotta tell you something. Mick's a pretty good guy. He didn't say anything. He just told me to get back in his crease. Good guy. Hey, kids, pay attention when you're on the bench. Keep your eye on those flying pucks. And I'm not kidding. I've seen some bad injuries from this. Hey, when I was coaching, I get hit a few times, too. Watch Kenny says, wow, wow. Hey, what's one of my tapes without something funny happened to Mike Fadano? If he isn't falling off the stretcher, or his pants is falling down, he's getting knocked into the bench. Hey, look at Deadmarsh laughing at him. Mike, you made it again. Okay, change him up. Hey, watch out for that blue line, it'll get you every time. <laughs> and don't you notice they always seem to score when you do something like that? Well, almost every time. Hey, these sticks cost a hundred bucks. I bet if he was paying for them, he wouldn't do that. Hey, this is one of my favorites. Steve from Kamloops, B.C. wants to know if I thought Scott Stevens should have won the MVP of the playoffs. Are you kidding me? He was a one-man wrecking crew. Let me tell you something. He had guys terrified. Some of them wouldn't even come over the blue line. The coaches on, you know who I'm talking about, too, had to get cattle prods to get them over the boards. This guy's a pit bull looking for trouble. Are you ready? Watch him do his stuff. I call this the eyes. You know why? I was talking to a member of the family of Scott just before the game where he hit Lindros. And she said, I'm going to go up and sit up a way high. And I said, how come? She says, I sat down on the first roll and I'm scared of his eyes. His eyes absolutely scare me. She says, I've never seen his eyes like that. And boy, he's got the eyes of a pit bull. And you come down, he's going to nail you. Now watch this, this is a strange one coming up, folks. Scott catches Langhau with his head down coming along the blue line, right? Bawangle. Now Scott catches Eric Bawangle in the same spot. Watch, look, take a look at this. I tell you, folks, it's deja vu. And I'll tell you another thing, he had guys terrified out there. They didn't even want to cross the blue line. You know what? I don't blame them. The Warrior. The Warrior. Got Stevens, the Warrior. I wasn't too happy here, was he? Hey, Scott's not only a banger, he chipped in with a few goals. Watch this beauty. 
Two-time Stanley Cup winner and MVP indeed. Hey, but Scott wasn't the only one throwing his weight around. Think, folks, they were really hitting that Colorado Dallas series. Understand it. I can't believe somebody said the finals were boring. Are you kidding me? Watch this action. Let's go, Sally from North Bay, Ontario. Hope oh, first of all, hey, you like this suit? I'll tell you, this this suit got more comments than any suit I wore in the playoff. Can't figure it out. Oh, my lime suits and all that. Anyhow, must be the cut or something. Sally from North Bay wants to know what do I think now? The minor leagues are going to call OT sudden life. I mean, come on, instead of sudden death. Hey, these guys have never ever been in overtime games because I'll tell you something. The degree of happiness when you win never matches the degree of unhappiness when you lose. Anyhow, it might be sudden life for those guys, but when you lose, it's sudden death. Watch. Starting with my buddy Stevie Thomas. Watch this. My favorite, Stewie Barnes. Here's Yummer. Hey, I got it right. Just put it on the net, folks. I love it when those bank defensemen score. Right, Andy? Hey, top corner. Good hand, Andy boy. And here's hard-working Keith Remo. Hey, folks, this one went five overtime. And then Keith makes a nice move on Casper Wright and then ends it in a hurry. Way to go, Keith. What a move. Joe Noonight scores the winner. Just put it on the net. That's all you have to do. Hey, you notice how many overtime goals always start from the point? Mike Padano with the beautiful tee. Hey, watch it. Just like Joe's goal. Paul flips it on the net, and Mike tips it just past Martin. Now 
Jason Jason. Hey, this is every kid's dream while you're playing road hockey. I'll tell you, he scores the Stanley Cup winner in overtime. Can you imagine two? Are they happy or what? All right, here's one I get asked all the time. Steve from Burnaby, B.C. He wants to know if I could have one player to start a franchise. Well, I'll tell you, it'd be nobody else but Cujo. Curtis Joseph, he'll steal you a game, he'll steal you a series, and someday he's going to win the Stanley Cup. Cujo for sure. Hey, watch these beauty saves. says Bears and never back checks. If Scott Stevens wasn't the MVP, this guy would have been. Battle of the goalies in the semifinals. Patrick versus Eddie the Eagle. They went save for save for seven games. Seven, the difference was Madonna's shot goes off the post and in. Fork shot rings off the post and out. That's the difference, folks. Hey, and here's a rookie, Brian Boucher, who made some spectacular saves in the last year's playoffs. Looks like he was taking a lesson from Hasek. Hey folks, this is for all you Wendell Clark fans out there, and believe me, I'm one of them. Wendell. And here's Wendell taking on another one of my favorites, Bobby Probert. You know, I've never been able to figure out something. When Wendell was taking on the big guys like Probert and all those big guys, the people said he shouldn't take and fight those and hit those big guys. So then he takes their advice and stops hitting the big guys, and then they say he's not the Wendell of old. He couldn't win. I still say he should be playing. It's a shame he retired. Stay the price. Folks, remember this hat trick in game six of the semifinals in 92? Here he comes off the bench. Dougie feeds him a beauty. Look at that. He puts it home with a great wrist shot, and it goes into overtime. But I won't tell you what happened after. You remember. Hey, this was last year, and they say he couldn't play. It's sad they let him go. Warrior. This was last year in the playoffs. Now Wendell puts away Ottawa. Folks, this was his last goal. Thanks for all the memories, Wendell. You're a beauty. Now watch these pretty goals. 
Bertuzzi. Jaeger with a wrister. Roenick. Lindstrom with a zinger. Federoff. Aduk. Sakic. Under Iserman. Kenny Donato. Connolly. Latowski with a nice low shot. Cup. Corner, Korolev. Hey, here's a knuckleball from Ward. Boy, look at that Korea put on the Jets. Forsberg around and around and around and in. One of my favorites, Stevie Sullivan with a beauty. Tyler Smith pulls it wide and puts it home. Watch Pronger knock it out of the air. Phillies Gagne with a nice one in the playoffs. Arnett splits the defense and pushes it home. Matt just snaps it on the net. Boy, he has a nice teeth, just like Mike. Watch these beauty hits. and a lot of famous guys come from their beautiful city. Dave wants to know if I could take a one rule in the National Hockey League, what would it be? It would be the instigator rule. You knew that. It was put in about 10 years ago. Worst rule in sports. You don't believe me? Watch this. Now watch this one, folks. Eric doesn't even have the puck. Pulling off cheap shots. And now Luke comes in to protect his star. Guess who gets the extra two? Doesn't make any sense to me. And now here's Matthew Barnaby back checking on one of my favorites, Darcy Tucker. Now you see they're going to have a little disagreement here. I would rather have them do this, and I know a lot of people don't like disagreements like this, but I would rather have them do this than wait till his back's turned 
and drive him into the boards head first. I never like that stuff, or high stick him in the face, or elbow him and put him in the hospital. At least they go, they're two honest guys going. Matthew is just biting his time here. Lily says, no, 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 don't stop it, let it go. And Darcy, he's not looking at anybody. He just wants a piece of him. Now watch Darcy's eyes. They are really something, he wants to go. Again, they really go, and you'll see Ma Matthew, he switches hands here a little earlier, and I hate it, see, he switched hands right there. And I hated when guys did that, but it didn't make any difference. Now these guys aren't heavyweights, but they go. You cannot believe how tired you are when this is over. It looks like Darcy's enjoying this. And I think Matthew's getting a little tired, but he still wants to go. You notice how the fighters always have small shoulder pads because they don't want to, you don't want them to get them in the way. Boy, are they tired right now, but they won't quit. The linesman's letting them go. Watch Matthew. Whoa, what a fight. And look at the players, they love it. Darcy. Now here's two captains. Now in this game here, this was a chippy game. Guys were running around, banging one another. We have Owen Nolan, captain. Shane Corson, he's a captain. So they said they threw down their gloves. Let's stop all this nonsense. You and I, the two leaders, the two captains will settle it, and we'll settle this game. Well, you can see these are the heavyweights. These guys are good heavyweights and good hockey players. They're not goons. They can score goals, and they're captains. And you know what happened, folks? The game settled down, there was no more chippiness, and the game just got on. That's the way it used to be. Two good guys going at it, and I'll tell you, hey, I love them both. Well, that's it for another year, folks. Boy, I love doing these tapes, and I know you people love them out there, too. How many of you people noticed how many changes I made? Aren't they beautiful? I'll tell you. Anyhow, we're going to end up with some great plays as we... A lot of the, the press and everything else said, yeah, the, the Canadians were doing their training in the bar, you know, over ice cubes and stuff like that. I'm not saying that we didn't have fun, because we did, because we were told that it was going to be a cakewalk. Yeah. But after that uh, shock of uh, losing the first game, and then actually losing the thing in Canada. Getting up 2 nothing too, at the time. Yeah, you know, well, we run out of gas. Yeah. We just run out of gas. We went to training camp August 14th. I remember that because it was my daughter's birthday, and I remember that day I had to leave. And we trained for two and a half, three weeks, I think it was, before we started against these guys. And, and actually, the training camps were tough because well, Ferguson was a tough yeah. disciplinarian and uh, and I thought it was okay but uh, when we went to Russia though we were a team Don. <laughs> <laughs> All right here we are again. Jeez I'm good looking aren't I? I mean you know what are you gonna do with these two guys? All right fighting in the game first of all I know you like it. <laughs> well you want to win. Yeah. yeah you haven't lost any yet have you? Close. Close, Close yeah. guys? That's you never there. say you lose, they're always yeah, tied. You can't say you lose. So what do you think of it, fighting the game? They want to get it out. What's going on here? I think it's, I think it's right to have it. I agree with having it. Oh, I'm, I'm, that's why you're on the show. Go ahead, Kurt. <laughs> I guess you throw them. Question. I got pictures of you throwing them. <laughs> yeah, I show up. Um, that's the main thing, though. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I think the, the way the game is right now with, uh, you know, as long as you can keep the stick work out, I yeah. think, uh, you know, and that's the only way I know right now is, is to keep the fighting in, but uh, that, that's where it's more dangerous, no doubt, and it's been proven is you get the guys going around and uh, keeping the sticks up and uh, using them, that's when, uh, that's where in, uh, all the cuts get going well, and the injuries. Well, Dougie Gilmore, in, in the three series that he was in, had 38 stitches. Now, <laughs> tell us about that 10 point. I, I'll never forget it. Well, first of all, thanks for leaving Dave Reese in there. I mean, uh... Yeah. I'll tell you about that later, why I did. You want me to tell you first? No. Okay. <laughs> well, that tell was us one about... of those nights where I couldn't do anything wrong. I mean, there are other games I really believed I played as well or better, but every time I pass it to Lanny or Boria or yeah. Tiger or... Went off Tiger. Tiger. Yeah, well, a couple it, yeah went off the Park. last one. Yeah. Yeah, I was Park. behind the net. I was trying to center the puck out to Errol Thompson in the slot. Hit Brad Park's leg. Dave Reese had his open again, and... <laughs> You know, Blue, she always has it. And just to prove that we're not, uh, you know, we're not prejudiced or anything, we're going to show it right now. Go ahead, Blue, roll that there. Massacre. Okay, now we're doing pretty good there. There's Park. Go ahead, talk to her. 
There's Lanny, and Lanny can score from anywhere. There he is, famous wrist shot. He pulls into his body and lets it go in. Over 500 goes, whoops. Cross check one of my guys. Got hit nice. there. Now he's nearest Turnbull, and he can shoot the puck as hard as anybody. Whoa. The crease couldn't stop that one. No, I guess not. Boria Salming, great player. Uh, I bat this one right out of the air. That's when it started. I picked it out of the air. Show the one who went off Park's foot. Oh, well. All right, now I'm going to tell you what happened there. Um, Cheevers had just come back from the WHA. This was his first game dressed. Never figured this was going to happen. But Davey Reese in, good guy. Just couldn't stop pucks at all. <laughs> put him in. So after it was about seven, I looked down at Cheevers. You know, I didn't know. I looked down at him like that. He put a towel over his head like that for the rest of the game. <laughs> that was it. We never saw him again. But I couldn't throw him in there because uh, he hadn't played in about a month and a half because from the WHA and that. And the next night, didn't matter, the next night we went and uh, shut out Detroit. And Dave Reese never played another game after that. No, that was the end. Tell a story. Go ahead. Some of these people haven't heard what happened. Well, I think everybody's heard it. Grapes have said it so many times. Do it again. Well, when he got back to Boston, they called him in the next morning to send him down to the minors. Harry, uh, send in your buddy. Yeah. And I guess he was so down and dejected from the game the night before and getting sent to the minors. He went out the subway lines there, jumped in front of a train, but it went through his legs, so he's still around the road. Remember Red Baronson now? You remember the Red Baron. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I'd gone through my whole junior career, first couple years of pro without a serious injury. Uh, my wife presented me with a child the night before, a premature child, weighed six pounds, very tough night, I never went to bed all night, and the first shift down the ice, Red Berenson was a great American League player, he comes down on grapes, and I wasn't sharp that night, and uh, usually when a player comes down on grapes, I felt I had to be sharp to bail us out. <laughs> <clears throat> and anyway, he danced around grapes like I expected, and let a routine shot go, and I missed it, and that was the first time I got seriously injured, I lost all my teeth and 40 stitches, and I want to thank you, or else I would have oh, been, good. <laughs> I would never been a complete yeah. hockey player. Yeah. Go back, did he? Joe Crozier? I got stitched up and finished the game. Yeah, stitched up, knocked all. You got the... benched. I got benched. Well, what else is new? <laughs> I've always, uh, I'm always asked, ask Danny, what is All Star game? I, when I, if you ever get him on that, now what's your All Star? Start just the oh, six, oh. six guys. Well, no, it isn't so, isn't so difficult. I'm going to have duplication in a few positions. If you right. don't mind. All right. Uh, Terry Sawchuk would be my goaltender. Okay. Yeah, beauty. Uh, uh, Doug Harvey and Orr. Oh, well, yeah. no question there. On left wing, Bobby Hull. Yeah, kill you with that shot. And I'm going to have duplication at, at center. Gretzky and Belleville. Cool. Now, don't call me a homer. Belleville was a great, oh, great guy. Hey, I like Belleville. He's yeah. a good guy. And I'm... <laughs> I cannot pick Gordy Howe and leave Rocket Richard off, and I cannot pick Rocket Richard and leave Gordy Howe off, so I pick both of them. Right. Imagine the great, uh, I leave off a guy like Bossy. So you know how difficult it yeah. is, but you asked me. For All right, that's good. Now, the Rocket's got to be the most exciting okay. hockey player. No question about it. Uh, uh, I was singularly lucky to get the job in Montreal, to be in the right place at the right time, but to come when the Rocket was in his heyday, and you had to be a pretty dumb broadcaster not to uh, make the game sound exciting when he was there. Uh, you know, he knew one thing, and he knew it well, and he had dedication and love that many hockey players today could copy. Go down and put that puck in the net, and that backhand from the wrong wing. And you know what? His ability to come through in the clutch. Look at the record books. He's got six overtime goals, the playoffs. <laughs> Real pleasure. Real pleasure to see you. I, I know you've always wanted to be on TV with them, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of the fans would like to know this as well. How you got the number nine? Holy geez, that's a long time ago. That was when I started playing with Montreal Canadian. Not in my first year, the second year. Uh, my wife was pregnant. Uh, pregnant. Is that what, the way you say it? Pregnant. Having a baby. Yeah. Having a baby. <laughs> having, having, having your baby. Have a baby. Yeah. 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 And I was out playing an exhibition game in Cornwall. And uh, after the game, uh, I got a phone call that uh, my wife had the baby girl, nine pounds. And before that, uh, the Curvin asked me if, uh, if you got a baby, just to let me know yeah. uh, what, uh, how much he weighs and everything. 
So he, he says, your baby weighed nine pounds, so I'll give you the number nine, because number nine was uh, Charlie Sander, who used to play with Canadian, but he, he left a few, a few days before he didn't stay for training camp. Isn't that and, great? And that's, that's how I got my number nine. Yeah. No. Okay, <laughs> Every great hockey player after that, right, Dick, wanted nine, and Gretzky wanted 99. Because, 99. <laughs> all right, now, we're going to talk about uh, one that I, everybody tells you. When I'm walking along the street in Montreal, Toronto, they come up to me and say, Don, there's a game I remember. Now, see, let me tell you, let me have a guess. It's 1979, right? Now, now, tell us what went through your mind. It's a minute and 15 yeah. seconds to go. So tell, you tell us what happened. A minute 15 uh, left in the third period. We're getting beat 3-2, uh, and uh, we're out of it. Curtains for everybody, you guys. Everybody said uh, we're losing it, and we better uh, start to pack. And suddenly, uh, whoops, Jonathan jumped on the ice, and you yeah. got caught too many guys. There he is again. That's Thank right. you, John. <laughs> yeah. But uh, tell us how the play started now. You picked it up in your own end, right? Yeah, I gave it to Lemaire, and uh, Lemaire went inside the blue line. About maybe Looked offside to me, too. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Uh, 25, 25 feet inside, drop it back, and uh, Gilles Gilbert was in the net. Yeah, he played great up until then. <laughs> He's so sweet. Um, Anyhow, tell no. me when tell me when Blue became a hockey fan. In in your mind, when could you sense that she knew what was going on? Well, when she saw Stan Jonathan give it to Bouchard, she says that's my type of game, and she loved it. I know a lot of people don't like that, but how that got how Blue got into it, it was one night. Never Harry never liked this either. That uh, somebody asked me, "Who are you going to play tomorrow night?" And I says, "Well, I talked it over with Blue. I'm going to play Cheevers." And I thought it was a pretty good joke, and, uh, but Harry never appreciated it, and I don't know why. I talked it over, so the next night I said Gilbert, and it went from there, and now she's a living legend. She might even get on Bobby Orr's Hockey Legends. Well, Noon Land can, so anybody can. You're talking to old blue. There's lots of heroes from the sports world, too. So when you want to have a good time, come on down to the Greek Vine. Come on down to the grapevine.